Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this one, I thought I would show you guys how to use the PS4 save mounter on the PlayStation 5. So this is the precursor to the Apollo save tool. Before we were able to use the Apollo save tool for managing our save files on the PS4, we used the save mounter. So this is only for PS4 saves, but it works now on the PS5 because we don't have access, of course, to the Apollo save tool on the PS5. It's not available yet. So in the meantime, we need to use the save mounter so we can manage our PS4 saves on the PS5. So what we can do with this is extract the decrypted save data from any of your saves, which you can then use to modify that save file and put it back on the console or import decrypted save data from other consoles onto yours. You can also swap save files between different profiles this way. And you can also swap save files between different game versions, like a European version to a US version of a game, or of course a regular edition of a game to a special edition that has the DLC packs, for instance. There's also now PS5 converted uh, PS4 games, where they take a PS4 game and have replaced the PS4 textures with the PS5 textures and some of the PS5 settings and the UI. So you can also say swap a save file from your PS4 version to one of those PS5 converted versions if you wanted to. So I've just given you a few examples of what you could use this for. The save mounter currently supports 2.50, 4.03, 4.50, 5.10 and 5.50. Although other firmwares may work, they've just not been tested yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at how do we actually set this up. So I'm going to use two examples here. I'm going to import a save file from another console. And then the second thing I'll show you is how to swap a save file from one version of a game to another. So let's go ahead and get into this. So first of all, as you can see here, we've got the save mounter. Uh, this is the port from Idlesauce to get it working on the PS5. So I'm just downloading the latest version here, savemounter.zip. So for this first example, importing a save file from another console, I need to get a save file from another console. So I'm going to use Bloodborne because Bloodborne is available on emulators like the Shad PS4 emulator and the Shad PS4 emulator actually uses decrypted save data for the saves, which means if I just search for a Bloodborne save here that's made to work with the Shad PS4 emulator, I'll be able to use the save mounter to import it onto my PS5 version of the game. So I went ahead and downloaded this one here. We've got a end game ready save. If I go to files, I downloaded the starter save. So new game plus ready level 100, all weapons, all armors and all runes. So I went ahead and downloaded that one there. Now also you can download saves from the tech game. The tech game has a PS4 saves and sets section. Now most of these are the encrypted save data, not the decrypted save data. And it's the decrypted save data we need to use in order to import it with the save mounter. I have found the occasional save on here that does also include the decrypted versions for the save mounter. So that's another place that you can look. There's also a Discord bot that can allow people to use their jailbroken PS4s in order for anybody on the server to be able to upload a save file and then perform certain operations using the jailbroken PS4, like being able to extract the decrypted save data from an encrypted save. So if there's any Discord servers out there running these bots, then you could use that to extract the decrypted save data. So anyway, with that all out of the way here, as you can see, I've got myself a decrypted save for Bloodborne here. This is all of the save data for Bloodborne. What I'm going to do is use the save mounter to import it on my PS5. So We'll switch on over to our PS5 here. Okay, so once you get onto the PS5, we're going to run the jailbreak. Once you have the jailbreak loaded, we want to run the PS5 case stuff payload if you are running a fake package PS4 game. So make sure you enable that, not ETA Hen in this case, because we need to use a different version of PS5 debug than the one that's built into ETA Hen. So once you have case stuff loaded, the next payload we're going to run is PS5 debug. But make sure you run the version from DizRL, the open source version, because it has the save mounting functionality. So make sure you load that version. It doesn't load up immediately. It takes a few seconds before the notification pops up. So it may not look like it's actually running when you first load it, but it is. Just give it like 30 seconds or so and you should see the notification pop up. And then once that happens, the next thing is to run the FTP payload as well so that we can get FTP access. And again, that one can also take a while before the notification pops up with the FTP server info. And you're gonna to want to note down the IP address and port number that shows up in that notification. Okay, so once we have all of those things loaded, we can then load up the game that we want to actually inject the save for. In this case, it's gonna be Bloodborne. So I'm gonna load up my copy of Bloodborne here and make sure you make a new save. So if, you, if the game does not already have a save file available for it, we need to create a new one because we're essentially replacing the save data of an existing save with the save data from another console. 
So you need to have a save in the first place. So if you don't, make sure you make a new game. In my case, I already have a save on here. So if I just click continue to show you the current save that's on here right now. So you can see the save is right at the beginning of the game. We don't have anything on here. We look at our equipment. Don't have any equipment. We're level 10, 300 blood echoes. Don't have any weapons or anything. We're pretty much got nothing. We're right at the very start of the game. So we're going to put on the starter save. So what we want to do is head back to the main menu so that the save is not currently being loaded so that we can mount it with the save mounter without uh, running into issues. So if we head back over to our computer, we're going to run the save mounter and enter the IP address of our PS5 in the IP box and connect. And that should use PS5 debug to connect. Then we select our firmware version. So I'm going to select 4.03 and then get processes and that'll grab the main process for the game which should be eboot.bin obviously if your game has a different process you'll select the process here but for most games it should be eboot.bin then we click setup to grab the profile that we're currently signed in on okay so setup done then we can click search and that'll grab the save file there's only one save file available for bloodborne here bloodborne save data and now we will mount that save file and it says it's now mounted in forward slash save data zero so we need to actually access that location using FTP. So I'm going to use FileZilla as my FTP client. So I'm just going to copy the IP address from the save mounter and port number is 2121 and we can connect to our PS5 and access the file system. From here, we're going to go into the MNT folder and then the sandbox folder. Then the usually the top folder here should be the title ID that we're looking for. And then we've got our save data zero and this is the mounted save data here. We go in here these are all of the save files that we have for bloodborne and i could obviously copy those over to my computer to back that up but this is just a save that's right at the start of the game and we want to replace it with the decrypted save data that we downloaded earlier so in here you can see this is our save data that we want to import so what we want to do is just check to make sure that the file sizes are roughly the same and by the looks of things the file sizes of these save files are the same as the file sizes here. That's important because if the save data for the new save is larger than the save data from the old save, the existing save, then it might not replace properly, in which case there's another way around that. But with this game, we don't need to do that because we can see that the save files are actually the same file size. So that's not really an issue in this case. So what I can do is just delete the saves from the original save and then take the new save data and copy it all in. The only thing we don't copy is the SCE system folder. We leave that as is and that should be it. So at this point, all we have to do is unmount that save file. So if we head back to this folder here and we unmount the save and then refresh in FTP, you'll see that folder disappears, meaning the save file has been successfully unmounted. You want to make sure you always unmount the save file before you try to exit the game or load the save file. Otherwise, that could cause a issue. So with that, we should be all good to go if we switch back over to our console again and start play offline again, continue. And this should now load our modified save file that we put on here with the save mounter. Okay, so again, it's right at the beginning of the game because this is a starter save. But as you can see, we are definitely not on the same save file here. We've got, what, 23,000 or 230,000, it looks like, runes. And then we also have got, uh, you know, a lot of equipment on here. We're level 100. So this save has been successfully added. We also have all of the weapons. So we have successfully got the starter save loaded on here. So that's how you get a save file from another console transferred onto yours. But the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to transfer a save file from one version of a game to another or from one profile to another and what to do if the new save data is significantly larger than the original save data that you're replacing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that next. And the game I'm going to use for this is Resident Evil Village. So we've got Resident Evil Village PS4 and then we have the PS5 converted version. So my main save is on this PS4 version and I want to transfer it over to this PS5 converted version. That's also the gold edition, which has all of the DLC included, which is not currently available on the version that I have the save file for. So let's go ahead and load up the version of the game that has the original save data that I want to transfer. Okay, so this is the save file I've got here that I want to transfer over to the other version of the game that has the PS5 textures and UI. So you can see here, if I go to controls, we still have the PS4 UI on this version. So I want to get the save file transferred over. So what I'm going to do is just quit out of the game and 
check what save slot this save file is actually on so that we make sure that we extract the decrypted save data from the correct save file because this game also has an auto save feature. So if we go to the load game, you can see in our main save slots, it is save slot one that has the save file that I want. So that is the save data that I need to be mounting. So if we switch back over to the save mounter again, we'll get processes to grab our eboot.bin. We'll click setup again to grab the profile. Wait for it to say setup done. Then we can click search to grab all of the save files. And you can see we've got a few here. So we've got uh, this save service line 0-1. So that looks like that is probably the, well, it says system save data. So that's probably like your settings, like your brightness settings and all of the settings that you initialize when you first load the game. Then we've got 0, 0 which is an auto save. And then we've got save slot 1. So save data slot 0, 01. So that's the one that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that save file mounted in forward slash save data 0. So if we head back here again and go back to the sandbox directory. So we'll go back to the MNT sandbox and then go into the title ID. And then we have save data zero. And this is our mounted save data here for the game. So we'll just extract that over to our desktop. So save 001 slot dot bin. So with that, we can then unmount the save file again. And, and now what we can do is again, switch back over to our console. And now we can load up the other version of the game to import the save file into. So we'll close out of this version and run this PS5 converted version of the gold edition, which has all of the DLC included. Now, obviously, if you were swapping a save file from one profile to another instead of one game version to another, this is the point where you would sign out of your current profile and sign into the other profile that you want to import the save data into. Okay, so there's no save data available for this version yet. So we need to create a new save file. So we need to make sure we have a new save so that we can use this to replace the save data on this save with the one from the other version. Okay, so there we go. We've got a new save loaded up here. We can see it's creating an auto save. So there we go. We should have our save file now. So we can go ahead and quit out of the game. So if we go to load game, you can see we have an auto save there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and switch back over once again to our computer. Go back on the save mounter. Of course, we need to get processes again because we're on a different version of a game now to grab the eboot.bin. Click setup to grab our profile. Then we're going to click search to grab the save files. And we've got two saves found. Obviously, this is the system save data, so it's not that one. It's going to be the auto save data that it just created. And what we want to do is we can mount this save file just to kind of have a look. So if we mount it, so heading back to the sandbox directory, we've got PPSA 01556. So that is the folder we want there. And if we refresh, we've got the save data zero for our mounted save. And this is it right here. Now, if I copy this over to my computer and compare the file size of this version to the one that we want to use, we can see that there is a bit of a difference here. We've got 300 kilobytes for the original save. And the new save that we want to replace it with is 1.5 megabytes, which is quite a bit larger. Now, in this case, that, that's still a pretty small file size. So it might work if we just swap the save file out here on this mounted save. But what I want to do is show you guys how to properly replace the save if the new save is significantly larger than the original, where it will not allow you to replace it or it will corrupt it if you do. So in order to avoid this issue, what we're going to do is, first of all, I'll head back and unmount this save file. So we head back to this directory and we unmount the save file. So that's now gone. And what we're going to do instead, if we get rid of that auto save as well, so we make sure this is the, the 1.5 megabyte one that we're going to be replacing. So what we're going to do is create a new save file. I'll just call it new save. And this allows us to kind of create a new save container and we can specify what file size we want it to be. So in this case, it's still a very small save, so I can just leave it on the, the lowest setting, which is three megabytes, which should be fine. So I'll create a new three megabyte save container, and we will create that save, and that creates the save there. Then if we search for the saves, it should now show up in this list. So there it is, new save. And what we're gonna do is mount the new save which shouldn't have anything in it right now. So if we take a look here, we refresh, we get our save data zero. If we go in here, it looks like there's something already in there, but if we refresh, you can see that it does not exist. There's no save data in here. And we're just gonna take the save data and copy it inside. So there we go. We now have save data 001 slot dot bin. Now, if you remember the original save that we were replacing 
was an auto save. So the save was actually a different name. It was save data 000.bin. So we want to make sure we're renaming the save file to the same name as the save that we're replacing. So with that, we should be good to now unmount the save file. And we now have this new save data on there. Now we still have a problem because that save data will not show up in the game. So what we need to do is go to where the save data is actually stored uh, for the encrypted saves, which is in the user folder and then the home folder and then your profile folder. And then we've got save data, then the title ID of the game, which in this case is the 01556. And this is our save data here. So here's the new save data that we just created. So these save data files are not indexed in the database. So what we need to do is find the auto save data that we're replacing, which in this case, if we take a look, I believe it's this one. Yeah, so this is the auto save. So uh, save service dash line dash zero dash zero. That is the save file. And what we're going to do is just rename this and copy the file name and then delete this auto save here. And of course, we're just going to rename our new save to the same name as the auto save. And we'll do the same with this new save file here as well, which does not have the .bin extension. And the reason for that is that, again, the new save file that we just created does not get indexed in the save database. So the game does not know that that save file exists. So what we need to do is take a save file that the game does know about and essentially delete it and rename our new save to the same uh, save file name as the existing save that the game already knows about. And that way we have successfully replaced the save file. Uh, and that should also solve any file size issues because we've created a new save container and you can decide how big that save container is to make sure it's large enough to fit your save data inside. So with that, we should be all good. If we switch back over to the console again, we can load game, we'll load the auto save, and that should load our save data from the other version. Okay, so here we go. We hit continue and we are back at the same exact spot, the same save file loaded on this different version of the game here. And as you can see, this is the PS5 converted version. So we have the PS5 uh, UI and uh, supposedly the PS5 textures and whatnot. I definitely noticed it's a lot darker, but that just could be my brightness settings. But yeah, as you can see, we do in fact have the save file successfully copied over. So that's how you use the save mounter to manage your save files. I know it can be quite a bit complicated, but this is really the only free option if you don't already have a jailbroken PS4 that you can use with the Apollo save tool to resign saves or something like the save wizard with offline account activation, which I have covered in a previous video. I'll leave it linked below. But if you want a free solution, then the save mounter is the way to go for now. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.